So if I remember well, we are now concerned with the third dhyana. And uh, to remind you, the procedure is always the same. To go higher from one dhyana into another, you have to be in the uh, Shuddha Samapati. And then from Shuddha Samapati in the Samantaka, I have explained the Shuddha Samapati. Hmm? We have the uh, Samapati or dhyana here, which tends to defilements. We have a jhana which tends to be stable. We have the jhana uh, stiti bhagya, hina bhagya. We have the vishesha bhagya dhyana which tends to go higher. And then we have the anashrava dhyana which is uh, free from the uh, defilements. And uh, we have learned, and it is repeated here very clearly, when you get into the jhana, it does not mean you have no defilements. But these defilements of the jhana, they are avyakrita. Hmm? The defilements, when we are not in jhana, they are, of course, Ashubha, they are klishta, they are uh, connected with akushala. But here the dhyana is a kushala state of mind. And as long as you stay with the mental image which with which you have absorbed, otherwise you would not get into dhyana so you are free from the kama asavas you are free from the tendencies of mind to be disturbed by the outer objects hmm? uh, it is clearly explained in abhidharma kosha also the uh, mind can be disturbed either from the object or it can be disturbed from the samyoga from uh, the connection with defilements now uh, it uh, cannot be disturbed due to going to the outer object in dhyana even in a uh, defile dhyana, you won't be disturbed by the outer objects because the mind is purely in dhyana, is uh, mental. But you will be disturbed by connection, by some yoga with the, your inner tendencies hmm, to defilement. These inner tendencies, they will not be based then on karma asava, on the inflow of impurities coming from outside. They will be uh, connected with bhava asava, with inflow of impurities due to clinging to existence. It is... Uh, Unless you become a Buddha, no matter whether disciple Buddha or a Pratyeka Buddha or perfect Buddha, these uh, tendencies will be always there. But you keep them in check. You keep them in check because you are, so to say, in a mental consciousness. So this is very important to understand why the practice of dhyana is so important, especially for the bodhisattvas, for those who want to practice the bodhisattva path. Because the 
Bodhisattva path is concerned with uh, the mastery of the Mano Maya Kaya, of the mental body. A disciple wants to, has an aim to abandon the suffering of samsara and enter into nirvana. So this is kind of a dualism. The Bodhisattva is concerned with uh, staying in samsara without suffering. Staying in samsara due to compassion, not suffering due to wisdom. Now, in Abhidharma, also in the Abhidharma of Northern Southern tradition, the uh, uh, wisdom of Dhyana is called great. Maha Pragya. The wisdom in Kama is called Parita Parita Panya. A small wisdom or inferior wisdom. And the uh, wisdom of liberation, wisdom of Nirvana is called the illimitable wisdom. Now, the great wisdom is the path to the illimitable wisdom. Especially when we will talk about the fourth dhyana. Fourth dhyana is called in Yogacara Bhumi Shastra Sadrisha Nirvana. Similar to Nirvana. It is not Nirvana, but it is similar to Nirvana because you, in fourth dhyana, you have gone beyond clinging to sensations. This is a state of a realized person. He has sensations, otherwise he would be a zombie, not a living being, but he is a master of sensations. That's what makes him Buddha. Being a master of sensations also means being a master of perceptions because perceptions are the base for sensations and perceptions and sensations they are the citta sankara they are the formations of the mind so how mind works depends what we perceive or conceive in the mind and on the result of perceiving, conceiving in the mind, we then uh, feel. And according to feeling, we distinguish what we like, what we don't like, what we want, what we don't want. Now, uh, this process leads to endless chains of cognition and this cognition based on perception and sensation due or expansion of perceptions and sensations due to tanha, due to thirst, is called prapancha. Now, uh, the uh, realized person is free from prapancha because he just feels, feels, senses, senses. He uh, uh, does not cling to the uh, uh, good or bad. but he definitely experiences pleasant and unpleasant sensations, but is not deluded by them. Now, uh, coming back to the text, we want to go higher because we want to experience deeper concentration. Buddha, among others, 
explains the process of liberation as a process of experiencing more and more subtle sensation. More and more subtle sensation is based on a kind of natural concentration, natural ability of concentration. Uh, the Arahat Buddha do not leave this natural concentration because they have no tendency for prapancha, for expansion of perception and sensations based on perceptions due to thirst. Now, uh, this is not our case, so uh, the thirst will manifest somehow, not to outside, but it will manifest inside. And this is uh, called Samprayoga. We are connected to the uh, latent tendencies to defilements. They are here in the text, they are called Samyojanas. But strictly speaking, in Buddhism, Samyojanas are the obstacles we meet in uh, the process of Vipassana. But they are also general names for a tendency to be connected with the inflow and outflow of impurities. And they will be there. So, uh, the text says in the second dhyana there are surely vexations covering the mind such as uh, let us see where is where is my hmm? where is the paper Sorry, I have mixed up the papers and now I do not find the following page. You have the page, following page? Do you know the number of the page? 16. I can, uh, I can have a look through half. Okay. 16. Number 16. Okay. Sweet 16, huh? Okay, so we have to do without the text, but Okay. This is 17. This is 18. Okay. Now we are. We can work. So he gives us example of uh, vexations which can occur. Vexations here uh, is a general term, samyojana as being desire, pride, wrong view, doubt, and all these. All these are, in a way, uh, directly connected to tanha, to thirst for having something else than one has. We are dissatisfied because we have thirst for something else than we have. So, uh, even in staying at the present, in the state of dhyana, deep concentration, this tendency of uh, uh, being, uh, searching for something, will be still there. This is natural. We always want to go higher. Uh, the... Uh, this need to go higher is also a, a kind of a tanha, it, it, that, but it is not akusala, it is avyakrita. It cannot be defined as akusala, as uh, non-healthy, non-beneficial. But it can be non-beneficial if it is connected with the lower states of mind, based 
not based on concentrated mind, but based on the uh, distracted mind. So, uh, what, how will he contemplate? He will contemplate in the Samantaka we have already explained. It is called in Chinese Jin Fen. Hmm? Samantaka means uh, the uh, approaching stage to Dhyana. Because you have the principle in order to change the object you have to go out of the jhana. In the Southern Buddhism, this going out of the jhana is, is uh, explained as going out of the jhana. In the Northern Buddhism, this is uh, very important to understand, you are actually still in jhana. It is not that you are out of jhana. Because the object is a dhyana and the mind is, strictly speaking, the immediately preceding mind, which in uh, the uh, Sarvastivada tradition in the Vaibhashika is the uh, manas, it is the, the, the mental organ. In uh, Southern Buddhism, in Theravada, Abhidharma, later Abhidharma, this is called uh, the Bhavanga. Bhavanga literally means the cause of existence. Why? Because this very mind, basic mind, is a mind which has, uh, with which we entered into this existence and with which we will leave this existence. So it is similar as Alaya. It has been identified with Alaya by many thinkers like Xianzang, but actually it is slightly different. We won't discuss it now. So they spoil the concentration of the second dhyana because you uh, so to say, you are not anymore uh, in the state of fusion with your object. You have to go out of this uh, fusion with the object in order to contemplate the inconveniences of the jhana. So, uh, the inconvenience of the jhana, of the second jhana, is, of course, the priti, the joy, or bhikshu body translates as rapture. It uh, may be also good translation, because it is a kind of uh, ecstasy. When it is in a very advanced form. So, uh, in uh, the uh, Southern Buddhism, this uh, <coughs> rapture is classified as the uh, uh, as uh, the Sankara Kanda. Prite belongs to the six non-defined. Neither it can appear in Kusala Chitta, in Akusala Chitta, therefore uh, it is uh, not defined as Kusala or Akusala. And it is rejoicing at the object. Rejoicing at the object, you are actually not directly touching the object. In the uh, northern tradition, when you study Abhidharma Kosha, it is explained as Saumanasya. Saumanasya means the uh, uh, 
pleasant mental sensation. Some strange sounds coming. Hmm? Excuse me. Uh, respectfully, um, I think a person named Jagdish Shinde has is unmuted, so we are getting some. We are getting some sound. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm sorry. So, uh, uh, in uh, the Theravada Abhidharma, this uh, Somanasa is uh, explained as Itha Aramana Anubhava, huh? the experiencing of uh, the pleasant object. And uh, it's uh, rasa, is itha aramana samboga. It is enjoyment of the pleasant object. So this is very important. The priti has tendency of enjoying the pleasant object. The same idea comes in the Theravada. That's why it lifts the mind. It is connected with the tendency of Audatyam, the excitement. When you enjoy something, you be, you have tendency to excitement, uh, and uh, its manifestation is uh, is taught as uh, chetasi uh, asada. That means in mental enjoyment. Now, of course, uh, they have very similar connotations, only seen from a different perspective. So it is a kind of a mental enjoyment. And this mental enjoyment is based on mind. Uh, in uh, Visuddhimagga, we have uh, the wonderful simile. Visuddhimagga has many wonderful similes. The pite is like seeing for a thirsty man, seeing an o or being in the desert, seeing an oasis far away. And the sukha is like entering the oasis and plunging into the cool water there. Hmm? This is a difference. So, uh, when one has the sensitive mind of the, of the second dhyana, and the sensitive mind of the second dhyana we have explain is based on this adhyatmika prasada on the inner clarity based on mental silence this inner clarity based on mental silence is the cause of the second dhyana now uh, in this inner clarity unless we have this inner clarity we will not identify clearly this lifting Aya. we will never be able to identify the uh, lifting tendency of the priti we will uh, we will enjoy it but now uh, this uh, inner silence of the mind, this inner clarity of the mind, will enable us to detect its uh, tendency to excitement. And tendency to excitement is tendency to defilement. So, uh, seeing this as a prison, seeing this as disturbance for uh, greater 
peace which is based on greater concentration the uh, when the meditator contemplates in this way in his samantaka dhyana then it will drop automatically when it drops the what will be the result we have explained the cause of the second dhyana cause of the first dhyana is kusala vitaka vichara which remains on the same object cause of the second dhyana is this inner clarity explained as faith when the mind becomes silent you have a deeper faith in what you're doing you don't question it's a, a peaceful state in the third dhyana in order to see very clearly the inconvenience of priti you need uh, more detachment more upeksha you need uh, better mindfulness and you need uh, more sampajanya more wisdom more wisdom based on ability to put things together in a clear way these uh, three are the causes of the third dhyana we have already explained based on the principle you find in yoga chara bhumi shastra the first and second dhyana is called sapitika the third and the fourth dhyana they are called nirpritika they are deprived of piti nipitika now this uh, state of being deprived of pt in uh, yoga chara bhumi shastra is called in chinese anla peaceful happiness as opposed to the first and second dhyana which have sila happiness connected with the priti with Uh, uh, rejoicing we can translate priti as rejoicing rejoicing at a desirable object so there is no more rejoicing at the desirable object so the mind can go deeper deeper in what in a peaceful happiness happiness without disturbance so the third dhyana is the best as far as uh, the science of concentration is concerned science of shamatha is concerned is called the best happiness because it is the most peaceful happiness the most peaceful happiness but of course there is a problem you should be clearly aware we practice dhyana we practice shamatha to be a peace and to be a peace is to be happy then the fourth dhyana is also for better happiness but what is better happiness without happiness we will see it is the happiness of upeksha it is the happiness of nice pleasant 
nor unpleasant sensation which is more peaceful than a pleasant sensation. But as Buddha teaches in the different suttas, this neither pleasant nor unpleasant happiness is happiness for the wives and it is not happiness for the fools because a fool does not like a neutral feeling. Abhidharma gives a very wonderful story about this. We who are caught in this vicious circle of samsara, we are caught due to clinging to the sensations. Now, when we have pleasant sensation, we have anushaya, latent tendency to clinging. When we have unpleasant sensation, we have a latent tendency to a forceful rejection. And when we have neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation, then we search for some other sensation. That's also a base for many of the mental sicknesses. Better uh, to have unpleasant sensation than no sensation at all. Now, the uh, upeksha of the fourth dhyana is a perfect upeksha because it is viparita as uh, Abhidharma explained, to both to uh, itha and anitha, to ishta anishta, to the desirable and non-desirable. This is only characteristic of the fourth dhyana in the lower stages you don't have it. But in order to discover the superiority of this uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation in the fourth dhyana, you have to attain clearly and dwell without effort in this uh, pure happiness of the third dhyana, free from rejoicing. This will make the mind more pliable because a mind which has better mindfulness, better samprajanya, better awareness and better samskara upeksha. What means samskara upeksha? Samskara upeksha is different. It is not indifference. Samskara Upeksha is wisdom. Wisdom of neither clinging to the pleasant nor rejecting forcefully the unpleasant. That is called Samskara Upeksha. We have, when you study Visuddhimagga, we have even ten times of Upeksha described there. Most of the Upekshas, they are the Samskara Upeksha. The Vipassana Upeksha is Samskara Upeksha. The Brahma Vihara Upeksha is also Samskara Upeksha. The uh, uh, Upeksha of the fourth Dhyana, of course, has also Samskara Upeksha. Without Samskara Upeksha, according to Abhidharma, you don't have any powerful Kusala Chitta. If there is no samskara upeksha, no real kusala chitta. So it is in Southern Buddhism, Northern Buddhism, both described as the uh, uh, kusala mahabhumika, as the uh, uh, mental factors 
that need to be present in each and every wholesome, uh, healthy mind. So uh, the uh, rasa or the taste or the function of this fourth jhana upeka is majatata, staying in the middle. Uh, the uh, <coughs> normal upeksha it is not described as uh, staying in the middle because uh, as we have said uh, full as uh, for the Buddha the people in the world are, has always latent tendency to clinging to pleasant and rejecting the unpleasant. This is a characteristic of uh, the worldly people. When we have more experience in meditation, we will uh, kind of see clearly the uh, dissatisfaction. <laughs> Somebody again. If not anyone, it's necessary everybody has to be. Somebody from Gauri. Gauri yeah, has a open the microphone. <laughs> microphone hmm? So please be careful, do not open the microphone. Hmm? It will make a disturbing sound, like the sound of Priti in the second Diana. It's also <laughs> kind of a disturbing sound. But it is disturbing sound only when we uh, want, when we are uh, contemplating in Samantaka the uh, uh, unpleasant tendency of this priti, which is uh, tendency to excitement, to lift the mind. And because it lifts the mind, then you will try to counter this tendency. And countering this tendency is also kind of a, a unequal effort. In order to stay in dhyana, we need equal effort. This is very well described in uh, yoga books also. Vachaspati Mishra's commentary to Yoga Sutras. It's connected with uh, Yogacara Bhumishastra also. Abhoga and Anabhoga. Abhoga means we make too much effort to counter the uh, tendency of mind to thinking or anabhoga we make uh, too little effort in the countering of the tendency of mind to uh, excitement so due to abhoga anabhoga Bhoga is from the Sanskrit root bhuj, which means to bend. We bend the mind to the object either with too much effort or with too little effort. And this creates the situation when we are in a defiled kind of dhyana, not pure dhyana. But defiled dhyana is still a dhyana because the mind is concerned purely with the mental image. It is not concerned with other things. 
So the advantage of dhyana is that we are practically living in the mind. And as you may know, the whole, in a way, the whole of Mahayana uh, ideas are based on this. The objects actually come from mind. It does not mean they are not there, but they will appear in the mind first. Because the mind is a base, without the mind, no object. So there are a few questions, we will just uh, summarize them. This other question is, if this is the case, why did the Buddha teach the third dhyana is obtained by abandoning rapture and practicing equanimity? Practicing equanimity, I have explained, is uh, samskara upeksha. Uh, the, the text explains that in the excess of uh, rapture or joy, one experience one one experiences becomes one's experiences becomes attachment. When the uh, uh, rejoicing at the object is there, then it very easily turns to attachment. And then uh, the rupture leads to all kinds of fetters and become the base for vexations. Because the tanha, tanha in Buddhism is the base for vexations. So, as a question is, the five sensual desires are impure and evil and rapture should be abandoned. Yet this very rapture is pure, beautiful and delightful to all beings. Why should it be abandoned? Very easy, because, we have already explained, because we want a more subtle peace. Deeper peace. This is a base for the practice of shamatha. Shamatha means peace and uh, we want a deeper peace. That's why we are not satisfied with the first dhyana, with the second dhyana, with the third dhyana, finally even with the fourth dhyana because this uh, peace from supreme detachment is only a temporary state. It is only based on these uh, mental factors which enable this state. When these mental factors are gone, the peace is gone also, as long as one is not a Buddha. So. So uh, he should uh, contemplate the lower peace as a lower peace in order to get to the higher peace. And the highest peace is of course Nirvana. So uh, any state based on manipulation of the mind is not the perfect peace, but it tends to be more and more perfect when 
the uh, uh, possibility of attachment to sensations is gone. And this happens in the force dhyana. Of course, in the pure force dhyana. We have explained one has to experience deeply the uh, lower pure dhyana in order to go to the higher pure dhyana. So uh, the uh, Prite is enjoyable, but he should know that it is the cause of disasters, worries and sorrow. All Tanha is base for this. It is an impermanent phenomenon. When it changes, it gives rise to worry and sorrow. Hmm? Why? Because the impermanence is a state of Dukkha, and Dukkha does not mean uh, suffering. Dukkha means uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, inconvenience of impermanence. This is real meaning of the Dukkha. Actually in Sanskrit uh, Ka <laughs> can mean also sky. Dukkha means a bad sky. Impermanence is a bad sky. And we know it because of wisdom. If we don't have wisdom, we will not know it. So, uh, rapture is a gross happiness. Hmm? Gross happiness is based on uh, uh, itha aramana sambhoga on the enjoyment of the pleasant object enjoyment will uh, of a pleasant object is a gross is daustulyam now in the Northern Buddhism in Abhidharma Kosha, in Vaibhashika, the uh, Sukha of the first and second dhyana is called Prashrabdi. Prashrabdi means pliancy, but actually it is connected with clarity and relaxation based on lightness, smoothness, straightness, all these subtle qualities of mind accompanied by it. Now the uh, Sukha of the third dhyana is uh, purely Chetasika Sukha. This is same in Theravada also. So the prashrabdi, pliancy, but uh, the, in the third dhyana, this pliancy, prashrabdi, has completely involved the whole body. Now we should be very clear, the here is only mental body. Because uh, in the, these higher jhanas, the sensation of the body becomes, if not in our case, completely in background, because we are not perfect body, perfect yogis. But in the case of perfect yogis, it becomes completely upset. This is, of course, very difficult. But in case of 
ordinary yogis, it always remains in the background. So one can stay in a deeper concentration for a long, long time because he will not let it go to the background, to the foreground. So the third dhyana, due to this uh, mental happiness which penetrates the whole mental body, the whole of mental factors, and mental factors, they determine how we experience the body. This is very important. This is the mastery of meditation. It is the mental factors which determine how we experience the body. Our own body and also the body of others. This we have spoken in the beginning in regard to Asubha. The master of the mind like Shariputra, he can contemplate even the divine bodies as being impure. Why? Because he is above the attachment to the bodily sensations. And uh, we can become masters of the bodily sensations only based on the mastery of the mind. There is no other way. Because the how we experience a body depends also on the object, but primarily on the mind we use in experiencing the object. Another question, here in the third dhyana one speaks of one-pointedness of mind with mindfulness and awareness. We have explained that. Why is this is not mentioned in the description of the first and the second dhyana? This is very important. In the third dhyana one experiences happiness in the whole body and the mind practices equanimity, of course, samskara upeksha. It does not allow the mind to be attached to discrimination between good and bad. Uh, the uh, uh, dhyana minds are very subtle, that we have already explained, and uh, even the defilements in the, the uh, dhyana mind, they are avyakrita, they are not akusala. Hence, it is described as one-pointedness connected with mindfulness and awareness. Hmm? So, dhyana is described as one-pointedness, kusala chitta ekagata, the one-pointedness of the kusala chitta, of the healthy mind, not of the unhealthy mind, not of the mind uh, governed by inner and outer inflow of impurities into it. And this is important, there are three shortcomings in the third dhyana. One has to see them very clearly to go higher. Firstly, the mind sinks when it becomes subtle. This is very clear. Using uh, the Theravada Abhidhamma, the deep mind is close to bhavanga. When we concentrate, we use the deeper mind. The deeper mind is close to the base of the mind. 
and from the in the base of the mind we have preserved all these tendencies where else are they preserved so all kinds of images can appear those who have done uh, some continuous meditation for a long time will know that when we are getting deeper in concentration more inward then all kinds of images may uh, appear when one is not careful and will follow these images it can lead to disaster so uh, awareness must be there otherwise the mind will sink and mind sinks into bhavanga only in the preparatory stages of the dhyana it will not sink in into bhavanga in the uh, apana dhyana secondly the mind becomes active hmm? this is uh, the thing Thirdly, the mind gives rise to confusion and low spirit due to this uh, subtle state. Hmm? This is my addition. Uh, should his mind start sinking, he should uplift it again. Hmm? So this is uh, clearly described in uh, all uh, handbooks of meditation when the mind uh, goes down when there is uh, the uh, nimitta the mental image which causes the mind to be lifted hmm? he should uh, detach when there is uh, uh, something which causes the mind to be depressed he should rejoice the mind hmm? so if the mind sings he should put the effort hmm? this is uh, the way when the mind becomes too active he should gather it when the mind is confused and in low spirit he should rejoice it and here uh, Kumarajiva being the translator of the Amitayu Sutta and being so to say the early patriarch of this tradition of pure land uh, uh, recollection of the subtle qualities of the Buddha uh, does not necessarily mean the mean the buddha anusati the meditation on the 11 qualities of the buddha as explained in visuddhimagga it can also mean the uh, qualities uh, the supreme qualities of the buddha uh, connected with the pure land He should constantly protect the mind by countering the three shortcomings. The sutra mentions happiness in the third dhyana twice. What are the two kinds of happiness? The first is corporeal happiness hmm? and uh, the second is mental happiness. We have explained that. The corporeal happiness normally is the uh, happiness we experience sukha we experience in karma so there are three kinds of happiness namely corporeal happiness mental happiness and happiness free of vexations that is aklishta sukha due to which one of them is the happiness of the third dhyana supreme 
Among the three kinds of happiness, the highest one is more subtle. Of course, always the higher is more subtle. We have explained the Buddha, among others, explained the process of liberation as removing daushtulyam, grossness, and experiences more and more subtle pliancy, prashrabdi. The more subtle pliancy is connected with a deeper concentration. But of course, in the we speaking of the Shuddha Samapati. So corporeal happiness uh, comes first. Uh, according to we will describe in the fourth dhyana. In the first dhyana, the meditator removes daumanasyam. In the second dhyana, he removes uh, dukkha. In the third dhyana, he removes uh, priti. We have explained it is here saumanasyam. And in the fourth dhyana, he removes sukha. So he goes beyond sensation. Beyond sensation does not mean he has no sensation. It means he is completely detached from sensation. So it is itha, anitha, viparita. It is against Fourth dhyana is goes against experiencing pleasant or unpleasant with any kind of attachment. So, uh, in the sutras, in uh, you will find like uh, Bahu. Vedamiya Sutta, the Buddha explained the process of liberation as experiencing the higher and higher state of subtle mind. And subtle mind is based on subtle sensation. And subtle sensation uh, is based on the more subtle mind again. So, Due to subtle mind, the subtle sensation, due to subtle sensation, the subtle mind. They, they come together. Now, the most subtle mind, so in Buddhism, is what mind? No mind, according to Theravada, or the supreme subtle mind, the Alaya, according to the northern tradition, and in which state you have the no mind or most subtle mind? In the state where of sanya vedaita niroda samapati. This is the highest state of mind, where object is nirvana, subject is also nirvana. When you know this state, you cannot be confused about Buddhism. Because you are, so to say, in nirvana, inside and outside. So, uh, no more need for fabrication. As long as uh, uh, there is not this state, so there will be need for fabrication. for uh, kalpana, vikalpa. So, uh, according to the commentaries, the Shariputra, the wise Shariputra, would never accept any meal before 
he and before accepting meal he would always enter in the sanya vedaita niroda samapati he was a master from all disciples the wisest and the biggest master of this sanya vedaita niroda samapati so he mastered it to such an extent that he can enter to the samapati even for a few seconds no problem just like uh, Subhuti, master of metta, he can enter for a few seconds into the metta dhyana, perfect metta dhyana, before accepting the food to give the maximum uh, merit to the giver. So uh, this Sanya Vedaita Niroda Samapati can be mastered to such extent and can be become a kind of a completely normal state of mind. So uh, when one experiences that, then uh, nirvana is the normal state. The non-nirvana is <laughs> the non-normal state. As long as one uh, experiences it, so the nirvana will be something special. And the normal state uh, will be something different. And uh, the uh, condition for practicing the Sanya Vedaita Niroda Samapati is the complete mastery of Shamata and Vipassana. Vipassana at least to the stage of Anagami. Or in the case of Bodhisattva, to the eighth stage called unmovable also, like the fourth dhyana, but much higher of course, in the fourth dhyana, because it is based on, on mastery of wisdom. Now, he gives a very, we should finish here, but before we finish, we just do a little bit uh, the uh, rest. There is not much left. Uh, so, uh, So happiness of the higher is always more subtle and we practice shamatha to experience more and more subtle happiness. The happiness of non-happiness is also happiness because the, it is the happiness of upeksha. What is happiness of upeksha? We have to practice ourselves to know. <laughs> we cannot explain. So we explain it as happiness without happiness. Uh, so it is uh, normal because uh, Buddha clearly explained that the jhana and the liberations, they are uh, to be experienced uh, and you cannot experience them by words. So here beautiful comparison between mental joy mental joy can be compared to washing one's face with limpid cool water when feeling extremely hot while corporal happiness is like entering a great cool pond and basing the whole body in it hmm? so you see we are having the one tradition but a different interpretation different explanation in Visuddhimagga, different explanation in here, but the simile comes from the same tradition. So in the end we have the four kinds of pleasant sensation. Pleasant sensation in the desire realm connected with six consciousnesses, this is where we are right now. It is described as the mental faculty of happiness and the bodily faculty of happiness. We have in this realm of karma in which we normally are, we have these two kinds of happiness. 
The pleasant sensation of the first dhyana is connected with four kinds of consciousnesses, no smell, no taste, and it is called the bodily faculty of happiness and mental faculty of happiness. That's why we have explained the uh, state of uh, dukkha is not yet abandoned in the uh, first dhyana. It can be only abandoned in the second dhyana. The pleasant sensation of the second dhyana, which is connected with mental consciousness only, hmm? this is the noble silence of the sages, is called the mental faculty of happiness. The pleasant sensation of the third dhyana is also mental and is devoid of joy. It is called the corporal faculty of happiness. So that much for the third dhyana and uh, next week we will cover the fourth dhyana and uh, after that we go to the Brahma Viharas. Hmm? So that much for today and let us go to the questions. Supriya, anything? Yes, I'm here, Bhante. Uh, no one has uh, submitted a uh, question in chat. Uh, ah, yes, Kamal just raised him. Just a minute. What did you yeah. say? Mm. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, Namaste, Bhante. Okay, Namaste. Uh, my question is related with the first jhana where you say that uh, uh, we are isolated from uh, from our nivarnas from our and nivarnas the five yes, uh, yes yes right yeah uh, uh, so uh, we are in the state of bhavasa right clinging to existence yes and you mentioned that uh, this is avyakrat from the word avyakrat it seems whatever uh, little I have read from uh, Abhidhamma, it means that there is no there is no uh, uh, vipak to our actions. If I understand it right, Ante? Not necessarily. Avyakrita can also mean that it is uh, uh, the state uh, which uh, uh, kind of has. Uh, cannot be defined uh, either as uh, completely kusala or completely akusala. Okay. Of course, this avyakarita has many, many different uh, connotations. Huh? You have, yeah. uh, you will find in Abhidharma Kosha, huh? there is uh, avyakarita with uh, the uh, uh, covered by defilements, there is avyakrita not covered by defilements. You will find this uh, in the Abhidharma Kosha. Hmm? Yofu and Wufu in Chinese, hmm? with uh, the covering and uh, without the covering. Hmm? It, both are avyakrita. So when we, uh, when, when we understand that we are in a state of uh, clinging to existence that is bhava asa so what are the uh, what are the uh, so, sort of defilements which which are manifesting in those states well of course there will be uh, there can be pride there can be wrong view uh, pride wrong view both are based on tanha on lobha you will find the same idea in theravada also why we have pride, why we have wrong view, because of lobha, because of tanha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, lobha uh, is uh, purely uh, negative in Theravada. But I have already explained the South Northern Buddhism is a little different. Raga, huh? it calls yeah. here lobha, lobha raga, Raga means uh, state of being colored by the object. 
from the Ranj, which means uh, color. Huh? And it can be, it can exist in the positive mind and it can also exist in the negative mind. But here you are colored by the uh, inner object. You don't pay any more attention to the outer objects because you have united with your mental image. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That is why it is called Avyakrita. Okay. So it is free from these uh, uh, clear defilements. So it may, it may have defilements, yes, but they will not lead, these defilements will not lead to unwholesome uh, uh, vipaka. Why? Hmm. Because they are already connected with the higher state of mind. So they cannot hmm. lead to animal state which is based on uh, ignorance. They cannot lead to the uh, hell state which is based on hate. Hmm? Hmm. And they cannot uh, lead to human which is based on uh, uh, enjoyment, hmm? right? Yeah. So, can we understand in the way that uh, if we are in a state of pride, which is uh, uh, our state of clinging to existence, bhavasa, uh, so it, does it mean that it's not going to replicate and multiply? Uh, it will, uh, can multiply, but within the frame of the bhava asana, asava, it will not go into the kama asava. And the kama okay. asava is the cause of the lower rebirth, not the bhava okay. asava. Bhava asava okay. is not the uh, cause of the lower rebirth. Okay. This should be, uh, the gods also have bhava asava. Okay. <laughs> they have Baba Asava, uh, and the, but the Kama Asava is restricted to only the lower gods, to Kama gods. But the Brahmas are above the Kama Asava. So uh, uh, the uh, sensation of the Brahmas is much more subtle than the sensation of the, uh, the Kama Devas. They can still have uh, uh, jealousy, hmm? they can, uh, <coughs> but uh, the Brahmas, they will uh, not be subjected to these lower states of asavas based on uh, enjoyment of the sen objects of, of Panchaguna, of the objects of the senses. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Mother, I have one more thing to get it clarified from you. Uh, just to reiterate what you said about uh, uh, third jhanas, I think you mentioned there are three hazards or dangers in the state of third jhanas. Mm -hmm. If I understand it right, Bande? Yes, you understand. Uh, so, yeah, so the, uh, uh, the first not, was that is mind not. is again in the state of thinking. Right? It does not say that. It okay. says that mind is thinking, not thinking. Huh? Sorry. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Thinking. Uh, okay. Uh, because uh, it is explained, because the deeply concentrated mind is closer to Bhavanga. Okay. And because it is closer to Bhavanga, it is likely either to think yeah. or to produce uh, images which you are likely to follow unless you have some pajan. Okay. <laughs> Is it clear? Yeah, the, the last sentence I could not catch, Bhante. Okay, the, I was saying that it is not my words, it is the Kumaraji words. <laughs> okay. It <laughs> does not mean I am automatically identifying with Kumaraji mm -hmm. I am only trying to interpret from the little I know. Huh? So please, okay. 
uh, do not think that these are uh, my ideas. Hmm? Okay, yes, uh, so uh, just to reiterate, sorry. Could we request the next person to speak? I'm sorry, we don't have uh, so much time. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. There is one more question, uh, Bhante. Uh-huh. That's what I was asking. Thank you so much, um, Bhante Damadipa. I just wanted to ask if you could speak a little bit more about um, the yogi who has uh, gone beyond sukha at the fourth jhana. You said it doesn't mean he has no sensation, but that he has no attachment to sensation. Mm -hmm. What would evidence this complete uh, lack of attachment? And also I'm wondering, uh, it sounds like you are continuing this class next week, which is wonderful. Is that, is that the case? Yes. Every week. Very good. Every okay, week. very good. My understanding was that it was only through March 31st, so I'm very happy yeah. to hear that it will continue. Thank you. Continue. Thank you so much. Even if I go abroad, I will still continue. Huh? So Thank you very, very much. So, if I understand your question, is uh, about the going beyond sensation. Huh? So, yes. I have explained before, the advantage of the fourth jhana is you go beyond all disturbing factors for concentration. And the fourth jhana is the most uh, suitable base for vipassana because it has equal wisdom and equal uh, concentration. Uh, the wisdom, you need some object to differentiate to practice wisdom because base of wisdom is a correct differentiation and you need a, a deep concentration to do that and the fourth jhana is a deep concentration because it is deprived of eight factors which make the jhana incomplete hmm? it is jhana but it is not complete so only the fourth dhyana is a complete jhana. All the other jhanas are preparatory jhanas. Why? Because in the you enter the jhana because you have vitarka and vichara based on one mental image. These are the first two disturbing factors which you leave in the second dhyana. In second dhyana, no more vitarka and vichara. In the first dhyana, you leave dharma nasyam, uh, unpleasant uh, mental sensation. In the second dhyana, you leave the unpleasant bodily sensation. In the third dhyana, you leave the uh, uh, pleasant uh, mental sensation. And in uh, the fourth dhyana, you leave the pleasant bodily sensations and you leave in-breath and out-breath. So there is nothing to disturb your peace. So these eight, they are called in the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, Apalakshas. Apa means low. They make the Lakshana, the characteristic of the Dhyana, uh, inferior. Now, when this characteristic disappears, the Dhyana becomes superior. So, the superior Dhyana is the fourth Dhyana. It is the real Dhyana. So, that's why it is called uh, similar to Nirvana. It is not Nirvana because Nirvana is not temporary. Fourth Dhyana is a temporary state. Uh, you have to uh, make a special effort to get into this state. And uh, the uh, Nirvana is not a temporary state. It is something which is not created, which is that which is not created uh, is, so to say, uh, from the point of view of the highest truth, 
is also not born. Hmm? So uh, it is something which is lasting. So uh, it is, that's why it is called in the scriptures the uh, supreme happiness, the ultimate happiness. All the others are uh, temporary happiness and the temporary happiness is not uh, ultimate happiness but it is the path to the ultimate happiness because without the mastery of the jhanas it is very difficult to attain uh, the perfect nirvana the perfect happiness okay thank you very much Pante. thank you Pante, if you have a minute may i ask a question if you're not too tired supriya so, here okay so uh you know there was a lot of discussion in this dhyana about pt and uh you know all of its uh, sort of gross uh, qualities um rapture and all that uh what a PT is also included in the Bojangas, no? Yes, it is. And how does one read that? I mean, if I recall, I'm, I'm speaking from memory, so please forgive me if I'm wrong. I, if I recall in the Vishuddhimagga, Buddha Gosha says that uh, PT is, is, comes in handy, so to say, if there is a rising of, uh, you know, uh, uh, if there is a sloth and torpor, phenomena. Then uh, you use PT and I think uh, Dhamma Vichaya and uh, Viriya, no? But uh, and to include it as Bojanga and then that whole list goes into Bodhi Pakhya Dhammas. Uh, 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 yes, it's I a very think. basic sort of, huh? But this uh, PT is based on the Viriya. Viriya leads to Priti. And uh, mm -hmm. Priti... Uh, leads to prashrabdi hmm? uh, but uh, uh, of course uh, when you put on the effort then you will have the superior kind of priti not a priti uh -huh. based on the samboga but the priti uh -huh. based on your spiritual uh, spiritual engagement hmm? kind of hmm? so it is okay. uh, it is a supreme priti it is not okay. uh, the uh, uh, priti based on the enjoyment of uh, the uh, which is kind of uh, uh, deficient hmm? <laughs> which is based on imperfect concentration, but it is pretty based on virya. It comes after virya. Hmm? So the sati uh, leads to uh, dhamma vichaya. It means you cannot have uh, dhamma vichaya without the sati. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Then if you have dhamma vichaya, then you can have uh, the samapadhana. Hmm? Right? You yeah. can have the correct effort. That if yeah. you have the correct effort, then the priti will come. Okay. When the priti will come, then it will lead to sukha. Sukha will lead to uh, concentration. Concentration uh, is inseparable from prashrabdi. Hmm? From yeah. and uh, when the this superior kind of uh, concentration is there, then uh, it, it will lead to upeksha, right? So uh, it is based on uh, one leading to another, rather than it must be uh, there all the time. The eight uh, angas of the middle path, they have to be there all the time. Mm. But it does not mean that the uh, the, uh, the seven bojangas have to be there all the time. 
It is rather the sequence. And uh, besides the PT, uh, PT leads to uh, PT effort. They are very necessary for what? They are very necessary for concentration, but the Dhammavichaya, Upeksha, they are needed uh, for uh, Vipassana. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So the Vipassana and Shamatha have to be balanced. It is clearly explained in the Visuddhimagga also. When they mm -hmm. are balanced, then the eight Angas of the uh, Majima Patipada can appear at the same time. When the eight Angas of the Majima Patipada appear at the same time, the Nirvana will appear in the mind. First, it will be just a blare picture for the Sotapana, but uh, for the Arahat, it will remain, it will be real. But for the Sotapana, it will be just moon coming out of the clouds, as Visuddhimagga explained. But uh, this moon coming out of the clouds will still be completely change our inner attitude. So that one, if one is a Shravaka, one will uh, be sure not to remain in samsara. Hmm? So uh, it does not mean, it does not say like the eight four noble paths, the eight angas, that they have to be together. They have to be uh, balanced. And you use them according to your need, pity to rejoice the mind, hmm? dhamma, uh, vichaya, to uh, uh, bring wisdom to the mind, hmm? upeksha to bring wisdom to the mind, prashrabdi to bring concentration to the mind. Hmm? So you 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 play with them, but the eightfold noble paths, you do not play with them because if you concentrate on part of it, you will not see clearly the others. But when the uh, paramata the ultimate truth appear, they will be together and you don't need to think about them. They must be together. Otherwise, it will not appear. It is clearly explained in the scriptures also. So, uh, the eight angas must necessarily be always together. But the Seven bojangas depends on the situation. Sometimes you need more the three factors uh, which are based for shamatha. Sometimes you need more the three factors based on vipassana. And the sati is in the middle. Mm. It is uh, uh, always has to be there. It balances the shamatha and vipassana. And only when the shamatha and vipassana are in perfect balance, the uh, middle path can appear. Otherwise not. Is it clear? Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, shall we finish here? Yes, okay. Or right. is there any more questions? Uh, no, not today. Okay. Well, anyway, our time is more or less past and we can go for a nice walk. <laughs> <laughs> so let us uh, do uh, the Punya Parinama and we will finish here and meet next week. Hopefully all in good health 
and uh, with a lot of uh, inspiration to study more. Huh? Okay? Eta vata chamehi sampatam punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya. Eta vata chamehi sampatam punya sampadang sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya. Eta vata chamehi sampatam punya sampadang sabbe satta anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya. Aka satta chabumatha Deva, Naga, Mahidika, Punyantang Anumoditwa, Chirumarakantulo Kasasana. Aka, Satta, Chabumatha, Deva, Naga, Mahidika, Punyantang Anumoditwa, Chirumarakantudesana. Aka, Satta, Chabumatha, Deva, Naga, Mahidika, Punyantang Anumoditwa, Chirumarakantutumampara. Devo, Vasatukalene, Sasasampati Hotucha, Pito, Bhavatulo Kocha. Raja Bhavatu Dhammuko Sadhu 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 Thank you Thank you Bhante, thank you Okay, thank you Anshul Have a Thank you Bhante Wonderful time, Gautam गौतम को भी शुक्रिया आप ये सकावादी कब जाएंगे हाँ नेक्स्ट मंथ जाने वाले हैं बंटी जी अच्छा लेकिन यहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम ऐसा है कि कोविड के केसेस बढ़ रहे हैं ना तो फिर हम देखेंगे सोचेंगे उसके बारे में और आप ये पाली भाषा पढ़ाएंगे और क्या क्या पढ़ाएंगे हाँ और फिलहाल तो हम ऑनलाइन वहाँ पे सातरवारी कि जो स्टूडेंट हैं उनके लिए ऑनलाइन शुरू करने का देख रहे हैं कि वो कहीं पे भी होंगे तो वो अटेंड कर पाएंगे फिर जैसे सिचुएशन नॉर्मल हो जाएगी फिर उसके बाद हम ट्राई करेंगे कि वो धीरे-धीरे ऑफलाइन भी हो जाए और हमारे इंस्टि� संस्कृति पेटम वो सारे टीचर वहाँ पे कंट्रीब्यूट करना चाहते हैं तो धीरे-धीरे वो भी जाकर वहाँ पे क्लासेस लेना शुरू कर देंगे ओ बहुत अच्छी बात मुझे भी आशा है कि शारद समय में मैं भी जाऊँगा यदि कोविड स्थिति थोड़ा अच्छा हो जाएगा हम वही कोविड स्थिति अच्छा होने के बाद भी हम ही जाएंगे ठीक है तो हो सकता है वहाँ ही मिलेंगे हम जरूर बनते हैं ओके तो बनते हैं पुनर्दर्शनाया